You're browsing Zillow daily. You're deciding what your aesthetic will be, but you um, uh, don't know anything about buying a home. <laughs> so. I was exactly where you are just a few months ago, and now I am less where you are. <sighs> yep, I got a lot of wisdom to share. I've <laughs> done this thing once, so I know a lot. I've gleaned answers to all the first time home buyers questions, mostly by way of just incessantly asking them to all the taller, wiser adults around me. Five five, by the way. And now if you are just ready to do the dang thing, here are the top six tips that I'd give to those searching for their first home. First tip, get pre-approved based on your budget, not your limit. When you start shopping around for homes, you'll want to get a pre-approval letter from a mortgage lender that can show sellers right off the bat that you have the means to buy their home. Lenders will approve you for a loan based on what you can technically afford after considering your income, assets, debt history, all that. But does that mean you can actually comfortably afford that? Like, do you think I'm gonna liquefy my assets to buy your home? Instead of asking your mortgage lender, how much can I get approved for, or what's my loan limit, decide beforehand how much you're comfortable spending on a monthly mortgage payment amid all your other life expenses. Your lender, who can also calculate the average property taxes for the area and a guesstimate on cost of home insurance, can then tell you what home price range you can afford that aligns with your ideal monthly payment, including property taxes and insurance, not just mortgage payments. Now, that's a more realistic way to shop. For example, when my husband and I first started looking at homes, we got pre-approved for some amount in the 350,000 range. But when we told him how much we wanted to pay per month on our mortgage, including property taxes and insurance, we found out that we should actually be shopping for a home in the $190,000 range. That's Kansas, okay. Now that's like a $160,000 difference and would have been quite the reality shock. Second tip, shop around for mortgage lenders. While we're on the topic of pre-approval, you might not want to settle for the first lender you contact. When we started the house hunting process, we emailed the mortgage officer at my local credit union that a lot of my family had used to secure their home loans. And that's great. However, when our realtor, who was also a local family friend, showed us our soon to be future home, she recommended we also check out mortgage rates with the local mortgage lender that she worked closely with that continually had really good rates. When we checked in with her, our monthly payments were quoted 150, maybe even $200 less, and her quote ended up being spot on with our actual monthly payments now. And since she was still a local lender and not some big far off bank, we actually felt fine about swapping our loyalty from local lender to local lender. Or you can skip this whole step by getting a mortgage broker because their whole job is to connect you with a mortgage lender that best fits your scenario. Number three, shop with property taxes and insurance in mind. As you shop around, remember that on top of mortgage payments and their accumulated interest, you'll also be paying property taxes, homeowners insurance, and potentially private mortgage insurance. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's a lot. If you know the specific area that you're wanting to buy a home in, your lender may be able to help you get an idea of the property tax range for the area, which will help you shop just that much more realistically. A nicer, newer area likely equals higher property taxes, while an older neighborhood may have lower property taxes. For example, our house was built in 2016, so we pay $430 in property taxes a month. My brother and his wife just bought a house that was built in 1985, and their property property taxes are in the $300 range. So that makes a big difference to your monthly mortgage payment, approximately $130 of a difference. In addition to that, for those who are putting down less than 20% for your down payment, which if you're wondering is far more common than you might think, you will also be required to have private mortgage insurance, which you might also hear referred to as PMI. Private mortgage insurance is for the security of the lender in case eight months into living in your new home, you realize that you actually can't afford for this home. Yikes. You will be required to pay the PMI monthly until you cross over the 20% equity threshold, AKA when you officially own 20% of the house outright, at which point you can cancel the PMI because you've proven to your mortgage lender that you can afford it and you're a reliable borrower. But 
The heads up for later on down the road, don't expect the PMI company to kindly cancel your insurance for you when you finally hit 20% equity. Yeah, they'll just, they'll just happily keep charging you every month for your PMI until you call and request that it be canceled. So definitely write that on your to-do list. Tip number four, what you might be able to do if your partner has bad credit. If you have a partner and their credit score is not so great, or okay, let's be honest, yours, not only will it affect your ability to secure the best loan possible, but your combined income may put you over the income threshold to qualify for a first time homebuyer program. That's right, there's a program for you. A lot of lenders out there have first time homebuyer programs that allow you to obtain much lower interest rates while putting down a much smaller percentage on your down payment. We're talking as low as 3% down. That's low, low. But no fear, in the case of a bad credit score for one partner, it is possible and actually easy as pie to take out a mortgage under only one partner's name based on just their income while still adding both partners' names to the deed. A great workaround if a not so great credit score has put you in an unlucky position, but you still want to co-own the house. Number five, your down payment determines your monthly payment and your cumulative interest paid over time. You've probably heard putting down 20% on a house is the golden standard, or maybe 10 is the new 20. But truthfully, you can put down any amount as low as 3% and as high as like, well, 100% if you want to buy the house in full at the time of purchase, which more power to you. Your down payment is the cash payment that you have to have at the time of closing and have to prove you have in the days leading up to closing and it's interest free. So the less money you put down initially, the higher your monthly payments will be and the more interest you'll pay in the long run, which is a logical option if you need a house now rather than later and you just haven't had time to save up. So naturally, the more money you put down initially, the less you'll pay monthly and the less you'll pay in interest over time. A great option if you've saved up a big nest egg for a down payment that your future self will thank you for. And our final tip number six, save up separately for closing costs. Closing costs are best described as costs outside of or above the property's price. That being said, you'll owe these costs in addition to your down payment. This may include appraisal fees for someone to come out to the house and determine its actual current worth, title fees to legally transfer ownership from the seller to the buyer, lender fees, an earnest check, loan origination fees to process and underwrite the loan, and homeowner's insurance where the first year is often paid in full at closing. You can typically count on closing costs being anywhere between two to 6% of the loan amount. And while you can ask the seller to pay a portion or all of the closing costs, this is less likely to occur in a seller's market than a buyer's market. Closing costs are not included in your down payment, they are in addition to. So if you have $25,000 saved up for a down payment, you may wanna save four or 5,000 of that for closing costs and only put down 20,000 or strike a really good deal with the seller. <laughs> Knowing these six things alone will set you up so, so well to shop realistically, know what's coming down the road, and feel just a little more confident and in control as you set out to do a new, amazingly exciting thing. If you wanna be even more prepared in knowing specifically what to save for when buying a house, make sure to check out my video on the seven things to save up for when buying a house. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. <coughs> Do you ever swallow your lip gloss and it's just like <coughs> to qualify for a first time home buyer? <laughs> you know how you bind the homes? Oh, that's right, there's a program for you. Has that been in my lip the whole time? Oh, sorry guys. Okay. <laughs>